love to have you connect with us. Please text the word connect, uh, I'm sorry, the word welcome to 972-402-6456. One more time on that number, you say? Okay, 972-402-6456. Text the word welcome. We want you to be a part of our family. We welcome you here today. Hey, let's experience the joy of the Lord as we worship God this morning. You're in treat for a great time of worship with the band today.
everything the Lord is doing in our lives. Father, we thank you for, for what you're doing in our hearts. We thank you for what you're doing in our lives, Father God. We're so thankful, we're so grateful for you and for who you are. Father, we ask that you would open up our hearts to receive from you this morning. We love you, Father.
I don't think I'm the only one here this morning that is facing something that is bigger than me. Yeah. And the scripture in Ephesians says to put on the whole armor of God because it's not flesh and blood that we fight against. It's not flesh and blood that we struggle against. And it says, having done all to stand. And today, that's what I can do is I can stand. Yes. I can worship and I can praise and I can bring that problem that is bigger than me that I don't have the answer to. Yes. Into God's presence because He is all knowing. He is all powerful. He is all caring. And there's absolutely no problem that he himself is not the answer to. He doesn't just have the answer. He is the answer. And so I know I'm not the only one here today that can say the very thing that I just said here this morning. So if that's you here today, I want you just to lift your hands. Yes, Lord. As a sign of surrender that, God, this is bigger than me. This is greater than me. I don't have the wisdom for this. I don't even have the understanding for this. But, God, I know that there is nothing that's impossible for you. So I give this to you today, God, whatever it may be, Jesus. I know that you hold all power of heaven and earth in your hands today, God. And we reach up to you, our Abba Father today, God. You are close to hearts that are breaking today, God. You are close to the people who, of people like me, yes. that need hope today, that need their faith and courage today. And all you're asking us to do is just to stay still yes. and just to worship and to see the salvation of our God. Yes. We wait on you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We wait on you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Yes, come on, church. Come on. Last time I checked, when a team has a victory, people clap their hands. Last time I checked, when a team has a victory, people shout and say, yeah, go God. Hey, Hallelujah. give somebody a high five. You may be seated in his presence. Amen. This is just too old. Oh, thank you so much. Everybody give, everybody let our hearing impaired couple feel the love this morning. <laughs> we love Harriet and Eustace. <laughs> and this is how you clap for him, by the way. You want to give him a, a hand of praise? <laughs> I'm learning. I'm learning. I'm not all there yet, but I'm learning about hearing impaired language. So I, I'm very thankful. Uh, one of our great members of the church over there. This is just a perfect... Uh, segue and how many of you felt the presence of God in a strong way mm. when you get in the presence of God you're forever ever changed but I want to continue down the path that I believe this is not just a message for Life Spring Church not just a message for Rockwall County not just a message for the state of Texas but a message for the United States of America amen how many of you how many of you need that our, how many of you know that our country needs God in a way more than ever before. And so, Father, I pray your anointing that's already here just goes through uh, to the people this morning that lives are touched, lives are changed, and, Lord, that uh, we'll never be the same again as we take these messages we're learning from church to spiritually change America, to uh, spiritually spiritually. Uh, declare battle on the enemy. And I thank you for that song we sang because God, this message is about that you go before us like a devouring fire and we're behind you and we just praise and thank you for the victory in advance. And any obstacle that would be in our path, you have a way to overcome that obstacle. So we speak victory, victory, victory and we continue to pray for health and healing on the people that attend LifeSpring Church. Whether they're watching online or whether they're in church physically, God, we thank you for a great church right here in Rockwall County. And God, we want to be a light on the hill. And we pray Psalm 91 
continually over your people that no plague, no plague shall come upon their dwelling places. And we speak that and believe that in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, give God some praise this morning. Man, I love, how many anybody ever watched Family Feud? I watch Family Feud, and I love Steve Harvey, and uh, he always comes on and goes, I got a good one for you, and uh, I'm here to tell you this morning, I got a good one for you, all right? So overcoming obstacles, uh, let's look at, at uh, specifically today what I want to talk about is overcoming giants. Now, it, I, I did a series in 2016, a whole series on this, and uh, if you... If you just get bored in your day and you want to go back to 2016 and listen to that series, it's an awesome series. But I want to share a little bit of that uh, because the Bible, how many know there's many giants in the Bible? And you may say, well, yeah, there's, there's, I remember the story of David and Goliath and there were other giants that you probably, you know, nobody names their kid Ishbi Benny Bob anymore, do they? I mean, but that's, that was a giant in the Bible. You know, there was a giant with six fingers and six toes and all kinds of, a giant that was, you know, slept in a bed that was 13 feet tall. So there was all kinds of giants in the Bible. But why am I preaching this message today? Because we in America have created our own giants. Yep. Symbolically, spiritually, we have created giants in our life. And I want to show you this. And so let's look at the scripture that we're, uh, that God gave me so strong uh, is uh, in Deuteronomy 9, 1 through 3. And I know it's Old Testament. And I'm going to share a little bit of the New Testament as well. But it says, listen, O Israel. And if you agree with my theology, when I look at Galatians 3 and some of the passages in Romans, uh, we were grafted in as a Gentile. I wasn't born Jewish. But as a Gentile, I received Jesus Christ as my Savior. So therefore, I was grafted in and we are one. Are we together on that? And then I look at 2 Timothy 3.16 that says, All Scripture is given for inspiration. So I want to use this Scripture to inspire you today. And so listen, O Israel, or if I could say, Listen up, church. You are about to cross the Jordan River. So there's four obstacles this passage shares. And we talked about the Jordan River is a natural boundary. And today in America, we're battling against natural boundaries. There have been obstacles put up, obstacles of racism. And we talked about that week how we can overcome a spirit of racism. Because in, a, in, a, in, in, in this church, there's not black, white, yellow, tan, red, purple, whatever color you are. Uh, I've been purple before, by the way, if I got really sunburned. Uh, but there's not, there's, there's not any color like that. It's just one. We all are one. And we shared about how God said in the Scripture that whether Jew or Gentile or free, we're one. And so we cross over the boundary of a natural boundary like a racism. And to take over the land belonging to nations much greater and more powerful than you. Last week we talked about impossible situations. And I think my wife and daughter in the band did a beautiful job of, of expressing today how that when you're in an impossible situation, what you need to do is stay still, lift your hands. And I just, all I could do is praise. All I could do is worship. All I could do is pray and stand still. And sometimes that's what you need to do. And so that was, that was two weeks ago. And Pastor Greg shared last week about overcoming the spirit of fear. But as we continue, it says, they will live in cities with walls that reach to the sky. We're going to talk about walls next week. But this week, the people are strong and tall, descendants of the famous Anakite giants. But look at what God said. These are your four obstacles, but look what he says in the next passage. He says, but recognize today, the Lord your God is the one who will cross over ahead of you like a devouring fire to destroy them. He will subdue them so that you will quickly conquer them and drive them out just as the Lord has promised. Now, how many of you believe that's a scripture for you today? I do. No, no, that was for Israel. No, well, okay. But I want to be inspired by that, and I want to receive that as a word for me today, and I'm going to show you how. So I want to look at overcoming giants, and I just want to share with you uh, some of the giants that uh, out of these four obstacles. As we, let, let's look at the, the next slide about overcoming uh, giants. Let's go. That, that was... 
uh, two weeks ago. We already did the review, so go to the next one that says uh, uh, Giants. That has the bullet list, if you will, Lisa. That one. Anakite Giants. So I want to share how Giants were started in the Bible, how, how we create Giants today. Are you with me? This is going to be a deep message. Have you got your, 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 uh, your fourth grade hat on at least? This is not a third grade. This is, no, this is probably ninth or tenth grade. But um, These giants in the Bible, the race of the Nephilim or uh, the Anakite giants, or there were several uh, three different uh, subcategories of the Nephilim, were created, I believe, there's a couple different theological beliefs, but I believe that there were three archangels in heaven. All right, Michael who's over spiritual warfare, Gabriel, who's over messages and communication, and then Lucifer was the third one, and he led all of heaven in worship. This is all in the Bible. I'm not making this up. Lucifer allowed pride into his heart, and he said, I will overtake the throne. I will exalt myself above God. Five times, I will, I will. I will. And he persuaded one-third of all the angels. When that happened... Jesus said, I saw Satan fall like lightning. And every time we go down that path of pride, the fall is coming. I'm speaking from experience. How about you? And so, one third of all the angels fell to the earth, and instead of being angels, now they were demonic spirits. And these spirits mingled, Genesis says, with the daughters of the earth. So these Spirits mingled with the daughters of the earth and created a whole uh, uh, offspring of giants. So I want you to hear me. How they were created, a spirit mingled with the flesh and created a giant. Let me give you the spiritual application of this. Let's look at this next slide, how, how giants are created. So let's say that we allow a spirit of comparison in our heart. Like, let's say I'm going to compare myself to my wife, just as an example. And um, I'm going to say, man, you know what? I can play the piano. She can play the piano. But man, she is so much better than I am. And then I start beating myself up. Man, she is, you know. And I begin, when, this, this happens all the time in the church. Man, when, when people compare themselves with, man, Robert's really getting blessed. How come I'm not getting blessed? Man, you know, uh, uh. Man, the doctor said, I got cancer. How come this other guy who lives a lot worse than I did didn't get cancer? You know, and all these dumb thoughts, forgive me, from, uh, from the enemy. But the Bible says it's not wise to compare, and the Bible is exactly right. Do not allow a spirit of comparison, because when you do, you create a giant of discouragement. And now you have a battle with this huge giant called discouraged, and you walk around in life being discouraged because you feel like you're not as good as someone else who you're comparing yourself to. Come on, I'm, I know I'm not. I, 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 all of these giants I've been guilty of. Okay, now let's look at something else. The same spirit of comparison, if you allow that spirit in your heart and in the door of your house, and he mingles with the flesh, this is what also can happen. Well... I'm a lot more spiritual than that person. I'm a lot better off than that person. I'm doing, I'm, and then all of a sudden, you've created a giant of pride. And we all know how God feels about pride. He's not for it. And he wants the church and people to stay in a spirit of humility so that we can reach over and help people who need help. And so we do not, if you compare yourself with someone else, you're going to end up either being dis have, battling a giant of discouragement or you're going to be battling a giant pride. How many of you know what I'm talking about? Come on, am I telling the truth this morning? All right, let's look at the next one. These are how giants are created. A spirit of pride. If you let a spirit of pride in your heart and you let that mingle with the flesh, you know what you've just created? A giant of failure. What do you mean by that, Rex? I mean that the Bible says pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. Destruction or a fall, either way, it's failure. And then you're going to be beating yourself up all life because you, because you failed, but it's because we, we got to know where the root is. Come on, somebody. If you get a weed in your garden, you don't just pluck up the tops. You dig down and you get the roots and pull that sucker out, right? 
So don't allow a spirit of pride to mingle with the flesh. Next one. How about a spirit of condemnation? Man, I've seen people battle this. Now let me be very clear. Condemnation does not come from God. Condemnation comes from hell. Conviction comes from God. You know the difference between condemnation and conviction? The voice of conviction, which is the voice of the Holy Spirit, is very soft and says, I wouldn't be doing that. I wouldn't do that if I were you. I wouldn't say that. I wouldn't, spe- I wouldn't. And, and it's just this soft, gentle tug that's a convicting. The spirit of condemnation says, you're no good. You screwed up. You're a big failure. Look at the mess you've made. Look at what you've done. And now all of a sudden, you allow that to come into your life and you're walking around with a giant of guilt all your life. Come on. You, you, some, I know some of you right now are thinking, man, were you... Were, Pastor, were you, were you thinking about me? You won't believe how many times I get this every Sunday. Like, Pastor, were you, were you thinking about my situation when you were preaching? No! I'm thinking about my situation. <laughs> and if, if the shoe fits, well, we're all in this thing together, okay? Let's look at the next one. A spirit of lying. Who's the father of lies? And he'll come up with lies... This is interesting. Who's the, let, me, let me ask you some trivia or some knowledge. Who's the, who's the father of lies? Who's the prince of the power of the air? Is it a surprise that lies come across the TV waves and the radio waves and the airwaves because he's the prince of power of the air and he created the lie? Is that a surprise to anybody? But anyway, when you receive a spirit of a lie and you begin to believe a lie and you let that mingle with your flesh, you know what you just created? A giant of doubt. And there are a lot of the millennial generation today that, are, that, are, have, that have seeds of doubt in their heart because of something they looked on in the internet or something that questioned God. And how many of you know faith can't explain it? Can I say this? Faith doesn't make sense. Faith makes miracles. If it makes sense, it's not faith. It's knowledge. You can have knowledge, but you've got to have faith. And faith in God, God makes the miracles, but faith is the vehicle. So let's look at the next one. These are just examples. And I just picked eight of these. There's 800 of these. You know, you could keep on going. But a controlling spirit. Anybody ever have a controlling spirit? Oh, you don't have to raise your hands. Because <laughs> people are going to be like, oh, let's... I won't I want avoid that person because, you know, they try to control me. So I was going to walk the long way around that one. But seriously, sometimes we can get a controlling spirit, and if we allow that to mingle with the flesh, we just manifested and created a giant of anger. You know why? You know why anger? Because when you have a controlling spirit and it doesn't turn out like you thought, all of a sudden now you get angry because you controlled it and it didn't turn out like you thought. Oh, come on. I'm in. Let's look at the last one, I think, on this list. A spirit of fear, man. Pastor Greg did a great job last week about that. Spirit of fear. If you allow, which what does the Bible say? God has not given me or you a spirit of fear, but of what? Power, love, sound mind. But if you allow a spirit of fear, to creep into your heart and your soul and you let that manifest, you just created a big giant of worry. If your giant is worry this morning, you need to speak and pray against the spirit of fear. Pray it out of you. Renounce it. Say, devil, get out of my house. Get out of my life. Get out of my heart. I'm a child of God. There's no reason I have to fear because I've already got the victory through the cross. Right? I don't need to fear. So I'm not going to worry about anything because all that does is it, it, 85% of that doesn't even come true anyway, right? And the other 15% I can't do anything about. So I'm a child of God. I walk in victory. I'm covered by the blood. So I'm not going to worry about it. But pastor, I just lost my job. I'm not going to worry about it. But pastor, I, doctor gave me a bad, I'm not going to worry about it. Pastor, my wife was mean to me. I'm not going to worry about it. All right. You, you want me to add one more? Let me just add one. This just came to me. 
And, and listen to me, traditions are good. There are some good traditions. But if you allow a spirit of tradition to dominate your heart and your life and, your, and you never change because of tradition, you're going to create a giant of legalism. Because there are other people that don't fit into your box of tradition and then they're not going to be, the, you know, and you become legalistic because you're just about this box. I, come on. So, like I said, there's 800 of these you can, you can do. You can think about it, pray about it, God will speak to you about it. But we all, I think, have a giant of one kind or another that we're battling. And at the end of this service, we're going to slay some giants. So, let's look at, you say, well, that, that's Old Testament, that's you know, Anakite giants, and what does the New Testament have to say? Look at Ephesians 4.27, if you want a simple passage. Do not, can somebody tell me what do not means? Do not. Don't do it. You know what do not means in the Greek? Don't. <laughs> Give the devil an opportunity. Too many times we peek the door open. Is that you knocking, Satan? What do you got there? You know, and all he needs is a crack, and he's like that pesky salesman that fits his foot in the door. And then he's got a foothold, the Bible says. And once he has a foothold, he slithers in like the snake he was into your house. And once he gets into your house, and you may cast him out, clean house, but then if you open that door again, he invites seven of his ugly cousins back with him. Condemnation, check this out. Hey, guilt, hey, pride, hey, come on in. You know. So it says, do not give the devil an opportunity to lead you into sin by holding a grudge. These are four different things. Nurturing anger, harboring resentment, or cultivating bitterness. Those are four different things, and there are also four things that are progressive too. So just don't, don't open a door to the enemy. You know how not to open a door to the enemy? Keep your heart praising God. Keep your heart focused on God. Keep your mind on God. Keep your mind on the Scripture. Get in the Word. Be praying. Be, if you don't get in the atmosphere of the enemy and you're in the atmosphere of the presence of God, He doesn't have a chance. So, let's look at the most famous passage in the Bible about killing a giant. You know the story, but I'm going to open up some things that maybe you never thought about today. Let's look at... Uh, uh, 1 Samuel 17. How many of you ever heard of this dude, Goliath? Goliath was, uh, Bible scholars say, between nine and a half and ten and a half feet tall. So let's just say ten foot tall. So if he's playing basketball, he's bumping his head into the rim. Bumping his head. <laughs> Lifts his arm. And, and, and this, this dude, this dude was shack like too. He, he, not, he was thick. He was not only one of these tall, skinny, lanky, Guys, he was thick. He was, he was a bad dude. I mean, he was tall. He was big. Any football team, any basketball team, any hockey team. I think, I think the, the secret to hockey is just get the biggest guy you could find and stick him in the goalie. Feed him a hot dog every now and then. You know, whatever you got to do. I mean, he's going to block so many shots. Just cause I can't get it past this guy. He's like, you know, filling up the whole goal. But anyway, Goliath stood and shouted across shouted a taunt across the, to the Israelites. Why are y'all, are, are, are you all coming out to fight? Like, why are you even here? He did this for 40 days and 40 nights, the Bible said. I am the Philistine champion, but you are only servants of Saul. Do you see how prideful, try to intimidate, try to demean someone? I am the Philistine champion. You're just servants of Saul. Choose one man to come down here and fight me. If he kills me, then we'll be your slaves. But if I kill him, you will be our slaves. I defy the armies of Israel today. Now you say, oh, that, that, doesn't, that doesn't happen today. You want to bet? There's people that are saying, I defy Christianity today. I defy and they're, they're make, causing all kinds of chaos all over America and all over the world. And, and it's, it's, if we don't do something about it, it's only going to get worse. Yeah. And the end times are here. 
<laughs> Whether you want to acknowledge it or not, they're here. They're, they're peeking around the corner and we better be ready. We better be ready. And so he says, send me a man who will fight me. When Saul and the Israelites heard this, they were terrified and deeply shaken. Another translation said they all ran and hid in their tents. I have never seen one victory come from anyone that ran and hid and shook in their tent out of fear. Have you? That's not the way to destroy a giant. So it goes on to say, uh, David, man, all it takes is one God-fearing, Holy Spirit-filled man of God that knows how to use the weapons of warfare or woman of God to stand up right now and to say, I defy this giant and I will come to this giant in the name of the Lord. That's what he did. He goes, you come to me with a sword, spear, and javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of heaven's armies. <laughs> you, you said I'm a servant of Saul's army? Uh-uh, I'm a servant of heaven's army. I just trumped you, man. And uh, whom you have defied, today the Lord will conquer you, and I will kill you and cut off your head. You see, as we look at this next slide, this is the first thing we need to do if we want to defeat a giant. David didn't see a giant. He saw a victory. The rest of the nation saw a giant and sh shook and hid in their tents out of fear. David said, I see a victory. And I'm coming at you in the name of the Lord. I'm, I'm going to share four things that David didn't do. He didn't see a giant. He saw a victory. Second, he didn't listen to the critics. Guess what? When you take a stand for God, and when you take a stand for what you believe in, and when you come to battle in the name of the Lord, you're going to get criticized. I promise you. Don't listen to the critics. This is what, look at all the critics. And sadly, the first one, it's his own brother. It's his oldest brother. Man, I'm going to say this, and it, and it may hurt, but you have to beware if, if your own brother, own brother, says something that is not of God, don't listen to it. And sometimes people mean well. But anybody ever had a, a family member or a spiritual family member say something that didn't turn out well and don't quit the church, don't leave, just understand, man, they were looking out for my good, they didn't mean it. And when you hear Eliab's voice, you're going to hear he was meaning good. He was trying to protect his son David, but he saw a giant, he didn't see victory. So when someone says something in the church or in your family or someone that you love says something critical, understand that they don't see the victory that you see. Right. So when David's oldest brother, Eliab, heard David talking to the men, he was angry. I think he let a, a spirit of control, a controlling spirit in there? What are you doing around here anyway, he said to David. What about those few sheep? <laughs> You hear that? You hear that pride? I'm here on the battlefield. You've you got a few little sheep. What about those few little sheep you're supposed to be taken care of? I know about your pride and your deceit. You just want to see the battle. Second critic, the king, the one who is in authority. Don't be ridiculous, Saul replied. There's no way you can fight this Philistine and possibly win. You're only a boy, and he's been a man of war since his youth. His brother and the one he's in authority to just told him, there's no way you can have victory. But David didn't listen to the critics. Look at the third critic. It was the giant himself. And how many of you know, if you're willing to listen to your giant, your giant will talk to you. And its voice will be intimidation and fear and, and belittling. Look at the third, the third voice in there, uh, at least of that last scripture. Am I a dog? Goliath said. He roared at David that you come to me with a stick, and he cursed David by the names of his gods. So I find this interesting that Goliath is calling on the names of his gods, and David's calling on the name of his God. And so the third thing that David didn't do, David didn't do it man's way. Listen, there's some people that are watching right now, there are some people in here that are battling addictions. Your giant is a giant of addiction. And you allowed a spirit of hurt 
You allowed a spirit of pain, a spirit of a wound to take over your heart and mingle with the flesh and you created a giant of addiction. And you're trying to medicate that wound and that hurt by this drug or alcohol. And I want to tell you something. Don't do it man's way. Because, and, and some of them are good, but man's way will say, hey, you need this uh, other drug to help you get off this drug. Or you need this uh, counseling and you can't disciple a demon. We've learned that, haven't we, Amy? People come in for counseling and sometimes they just need deliverance. You can't disciple a demon and you can't counsel the flesh. The flesh won't listen to counsel. So David didn't do it man's way. Look at what happened in the story. You know, Saul, go here. If you're going to beat this giant, then you've got to do it this way, man's way. You know, Saul gave David his own armor, a bronze helmet, a coat of mail. David put it on and strapped the sword over it and took a step or two to see what it was like, for he had never worn such a thing before. And David said, I can't do this. I can't do it man's way. He protested to Saul. So David took man's way off of him. And he said, I'm going to do it God's way. I'm going to do it God's way. Some of you have tried to do it man's way over and over and over, but God is saying today, if you want to defeat your giant, do it my way. And so the last uh, thing that we see that David didn't do, number four, David didn't, listen, just confront the enemy. He didn't just trash talk him. He did. But he didn't just do that. He didn't stop there. He ran at the giant to attack him. This morning, I challenge you, if one of those eight giants we listed or some other ones we mentioned or some ones we didn't mention today, if you're battling a giant, the only way to defeat him is to run right at him. Okay, two people like that. <laughs> and look at what the scripture says. As Goliath moved closer to attack, David, and what you didn't see about the story that you probably already know, is in his sling, he knelt down and put five small rocks in his sling. And then he began to, or, or in his pocket, he put one in his sling, and he, and he began to, to get his weapon ready. He had five rocks because Goliath had four ugly brothers that were giants. And David just didn't see victory over one. He said, I'm not, I'm not only going to kill you, but I'm going to kill all your ugly brothers too. And as we see further down the road, he did kill some more giants in the land. But Goliath moved closer to attack. David quickly ran out to meet him. David ran. He didn't just try to, you know, throw a little, you know, boop. David was a man of faith. David came in the man of, name of the Lord. He ran at him. Reaching into his shepherd's bag and taking out a stone, he hurled it with his sling. And I believe... Me, this is the Rex version. It was a little bit outside. But an angel or the Holy Spirit went curveball right into the temple. Yeah. The thing about it is, you don't have to be the most accurate shot. You don't have to be the most gifted, talented, best prayer. You, all you have to do is get your, what's in your hand that you have that God gave you, get it ready and run at your giant and throw it. If it's a little bit outside, the Holy Spirit will go zap. Right? Man, I get excited about this. And it hit the Philistine in the forehead. And the stones sank in. That's a pretty good shot. I believe not only did the Holy Spirit curve that ball or that stone, but he also added a few MPH on that bad boy. <laughs> and the stones sank in and Goliath stumbled and fell face down on the ground. You know what the posture of face down on the ground is? That's laying prostrate before the Lord. I'm sorry. Prostrate. <laughs> Go ahead and put that one in the greatest bloopers. <laughs> laying prostrate. That's bowing down before the Lord. I just ruined the message, didn't I? I'm glad we can all laugh. I'm not perfect either. That's laying prostrate. That's bowing down. He was face down. And so David triumphed over the Philistine with his own. Uh, oh, the next slide. 
It says, uh, David ran over and pulled Goliath's sword from his sheath. David didn't even have a sword. He didn't bring a sword to the fight. <laughs> Goliath had all this armor, and that was the only place he wasn't protected. And David hit him right in that spot. And David used it to kill him and cut off his head. And, and I, I can imagine this. I can picture this because everything's bigger on a giant. And probably when David pulled up that head and showed everybody and blood dripping down, I bet it was about half the size of his body, you know. And David's showing this little guy came to a giant in the name of the Lord and used faith to kill that giant. When the Philistines saw that their champion was dead, they took off and ran. And, I, and, 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 the, and the Israelites pursued them and they chased them down and they had a great victory that day because one person was willing to stand and fight. Can I ask you this morning, what giant are you battling today? Are you battling worry? Are you battling an addiction? Is it a sin problem? Is it, uh, is it, is it lust? My son's going to speak on overcoming the obstacle of lust. You know, I, we got a lot of great messages planned for you. But what is it that you're battling today? The only way to get victory is to be honest with God. Is it discouragement? Is it pride? If you, don't, if you say right now, I don't have any problems, yours is pride. <laughs> and so, whatever it is, let's all stand to our feet right now because I, I want us to do this together. I want us to have victory. How many of you want to have victory over your giant today? And so today as the band comes and as they begin to play and prepare. I want us to have victory. How many of you believe Christ wants us to be free? How many believe God wants us to live a life of freedom and walk in the Spirit and walk in liberty? And so this morning, I want you to picture your giant, whatever it is, just close your eyes and recognize that there is a giant but more importantly, recognize that there is a victory waiting on the other side. And all we have to do is come to that giant like David did in the name of the Lord and in faith. And so this morning, I'm going to ask you to do something. I'm going to ask you to recognize this giant. And I'm going to ask you to slip your hand up if you're battling some giant today. Come on, be honest with God. Be honest with God. The only way to begin this is through confession. So slip up your hand. And I want you to do a couple things. I want us to say, I, I want you to realize that God is greater than the giant. God, let's say that together. God is greater than the giant. Let's say that again. God is greater than the giant. Now here's what you need to do. You've recognized that God is greater. Now you need to renounce the giant. So just say, I renounce you. Come on, let's say it together. I renounce you, giant. I renounce you, giant. I renounce you, giant. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. And I come at you, giant. I come at you, giant. In the name of the Lord. And in complete faith that you're gone out of my life right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on. Give God a victory praise. Give God a victory praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. By the way, giants can also be cancer. Giants can be natural diseases. Giants can be anything that is that is intimidating you from being in the presence of God or being closer to God. Now, there may be somebody here today that you say, man, that's, that's real good. I want to be free, but I need to know Jesus in a way I've never known Him before. If you're here today and you want to recommit your life or commit your life to Jesus Christ, if we all bow our heads and close our eyes again, I want you to slip your hand up. If you say, I want to renew my relationship with Jesus. Come on. I want to renew my relationship with Jesus. I want to be closer to Jesus. I want to begin a relationship with Jesus. I want to renew all over the, all over the body. Thank you. Thank you for your honesty. Thank you. Can we all say this prayer together? Father in heaven. Father in heaven. I thank you. 
for your son Jesus, for your son Jesus who gives me victory, gives me victory because, of the cross because of the cross and resurrection. And, resurrection. and I ask you, and I ask you to, forgive me to forgive me of my sins, my sins of my mistakes, of my mistakes as, I renew, as I renew as I receive, as I receive Jesus Christ in my life. In Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, give God one more hand of praise. I've got a young man that has a couple of announcements here today. And he's going to close us out. But how many of you enjoyed this today? Amen. Hey, next week we're going to talk about the obstacle of walls and how we defeat them. Don't miss that message. Awesome. What a great message. Can we give another round of applause? Thank you, Jesus. What a great message. Hey, you know, we want you guys to know, you may be seated. We want you to know, if you guys are battling giants and you absolutely desperately need prayer, we have what we call Mr. Jesus in this church, otherwise known as Amy Walker. It goes directly into this app that we have. If you'll text 972-402-6456 for prayer, if you desperately need that prayer, we will be praying with you and we will honor your prayer request. Another thing is, if you have just found Jesus and you love Jesus so much, especially right now, we want you to connect with him a little further, okay? We want you to text Jesus to 972-402-6456. You can pretend like you're texting Jesus too in this thing. I want you guys to know that. So, um, and that'll be just an easy way for us to connect with you and help you along in your relationship with God. Uh, Another great thing is our announcements. So first of all, uh, being the youth pastor here, I just want to say that youth is pretty amazing. Uh, You know, it's it's pretty cool. You know, hey, hey, uh, thank you guys. My youth people all clapped. But anyways, if you want to be a part of our group message that we have going on that sends you updates and announcements, please text YOUTH to Mr. Jesus, 972-402-6456. Okay, this week we have youth on Wednesday. Me and Maddie will be here at 6.30. It is starting at 7. All right, you want to challenge me in some basketball? Even you parents, feel free. I'll take you on. Even you, Daryl, I'll take you on. All right. (laughs) Uh, Another thing is this Friday. We have a movie night. All you parents, when's the last time y'all had a date night? It's been a hot minute, right? I just had mine last night, so I had a great night. Um, but <laughs> if you want a date night this Friday night at 6.30, we are taking any child from kindergarten to 12th grade, and we are watching a movie with them, okay? We're going to be watching back there with the K through 5th graders. <laughs> yes, ma'am, Christy. That's what I'm talking about. Let's we'll start the wave up in here. <laughs> All right. But uh, we, we're going to be watching a movie. K through 5th, we'll be watching Secret Life of Pets with Maddie in here with myself. So the cool kids, we're all going to be watching Chronicles of Narnia in here from 6.30 to whenever that movie ends. I have no idea how long it is. I'll be sure to include that in my text. Anyways, and if you want to come, just watch a movie with yourself. Feel free. All right. Uh, <laughs> another thing is, since I'm also the children's pastor, I just want to let you guys know, kid life is amazing. All right. Uh, <laughs> and then... Finally, I just want to let you guys know, we are just so happy to have everybody here today. Uh, If you're watching online, we want to know that we prayed for you to be here today. If you're an honored guest today, we want you to know that we prayed for your very seat you're sitting in. Uh, And we want to connect with you as much as we can. So if you will text welcome to, can we say it together? 972-402-6456. There we go. If you will text welcome to that. We would love to get to know you, get to connect with you, maybe go out to lunch with you. And then also, if you would meet us right back there in that back room, we would love to talk with you and just let you get involved, let you know what our church is about, okay? Everybody, let's just uh, bow our heads and close our eyes. We want to bless you before we dismiss you. Lord, we just thank you for everything that you've given us today, God. God, we thank you that you gave us the tools to slay our giant today, God. Lord, I pray that we would use those tools. We would help others outside of this church slay their giants. And God, I pray that you would bless each and every person that leaves this door today, God. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, real quick, I did forget one thing. The five ways to give. One in the bucket. Two, you can text GIVE to 972-402-6456. Okay? Or you can go to LifespringTX.com. Give online. You can give in the bucket. I already said the bucket. And then giving kiosk or P.O. Box 886. All right. Everybody, thank you guys so much. I know I burned through that. 